Guys, who gave Michael Bay drones? Because someone did, and he's not letting us forget it. I'm serious, I don't think more than two minutes goes by in this movie without a drone shot. Ambulance was just released in theaters and is Michael Bay's new LA heist thriller with a screenplay by rookie Chris Fettick that stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as two brothers who lead a bank robbery gone wrong, and Isaac Gonzalez as the headstrong EMT that they say are begrudgingly holding hostage. I was actually supposed to see this on Tuesday. I had an early screening for seven o'clock and I got there at 7.02 and they didn't let me in. I've never seen them do that before, but apparently the studio was very adamant that no one would get let in after 7 p.m. And look, I'm the first to admit that I have a fragile ego. It was humiliating and I fully planned on having a lifelong vendetta against Michael Bay and giving this movie a low rating out of spite. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you I'm just kidding, I would never do that. But even if I wanted to, I don't think I could deny the crazy awesome time that I had with this movie. It's not perfect and it's definitely not for everyone and I'll get into that. But if you go in with low expectations and it's your thing, you're gonna end up with a high octane, excruciatingly anxiety inducing kinetic LA thriller with solid performances and absolutely batshit Michael Bay camera work. And it's a situation where I'm willing to forgive some faults that it has with the story and a couple other things that I'll talk about because of this overall experience that it creates. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know your favorite Michael Bay film, or if you hate him, that's fine too. You can also share your spoiler-free thoughts on Ambulance in the comments below, and let's get into it. I'll get into what makes this film so insane, but off the bat, I wanna say some people will not like this movie specifically because of the way that it's shot. It's belligerent. Someone told me they left the theater early because they felt nauseous. Some people will just think it's annoying and unnecessary as a lot of people do with Michael Bay. I think it's pretty freaking awesome here. Michael Bay is as unhinged as Jake Gyllenhaal's performance behind the camera and he's definitely just having fun. But make no mistake, this is a man in complete control of his craft. There are some shots that literally made my jaw drop and I haven't felt that in a while. Every single Michael Bay-ism is happening at once. You have reverse cuts and shaky cam and the camera is flipping around and diving down buildings. It really is aggressively stylistic, but you also get these magnificent drone shots and sweeping camera movements that move through objects and they cut right before you get that satisfaction, which in my eyes was an intentional move to make you feel uncomfortable. And that's definitely what you get here. The editing is extremely chaotic. And even though I liked it overall, it definitely can tread into like incoherent territory. In my quick TikTok review, I passively compared this to something like Uncut Gems, Collateral, you could say Speed, Good Time, I've heard Heat. And that's about essence rather than saying that you should expect a collateral level screenplay or that it feels as tightly controlled as Good Time. This is a contained kinetic thriller that makes incredible use of its beautiful daytime LA setting and is relentlessly and almost exhaustively chaotic. And for me, I enjoy having those moments where you're like, I literally don't know if I can take any more of this because it's pretty amazing when a film can make you feel like that. I, I completely forgot I was even in a movie theater several times, but it also does know when to slow down. It gives you a breather a couple times in between set pieces, but it still stays intense and there are still these really tension-filled moments between characters that quickly erupt into the next big thing. When it comes to the plot and the screenplay, again, don't expect collateral. This is a thrill ride that knows it's a thrill ride. It's not some profound dissection of the human condition, but I also wouldn't expect your typical cliche generic action or heist film. It has early early 2000s action film vibes, but I did think there was something going on at a higher level here, especially for Chris Fedek's first big project. It kept me on my toes. It surprised me. I thought there were a lot of inventive moves going on that I haven't seen in a heist film before. And Michael Bay made the material feel genuinely claustrophobic and unnerving. The characters were more fleshed out than you see in some throwaway action film. Even the side characters I found pretty intriguing. Motivations were set up, we'll say serviceably. There definitely are parallels to be drawn to Collateral, especially with Jake Gyllenhaal and Yaya Abdul-Mateen's character. 
characters. And I thought they both played it really well, especially Jake Gyllenhaal. I love when he plays a psycho. We've seen him do it in Nightcrawler and Spider-Man Far From Home, and he's somewhere in between here. He's purely psychotic, but he has a lot of complexities with why he's doing what he's doing. And his character also brings a lot of humor to the script, which I personally enjoyed. Some people aren't gonna vibe with this humor. I kind of thought it was like cute because sometimes it was a little stupid. And there definitely is corny dialogue here and there. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is one of my favorite rising actors right now. He has such an addicting presence and he functions well as Jake's counterpart here, even if his role is a bit more understated. Isaac Gonzalez is such a star. She gave an excellent performance and there was pretty good setup for her character to show why she was the right one to be in this situation. I thought the three leads here were really solid for this kind of film, both in writing and performance. Now, I can't say too much about how this stacks up against the rest of Michael Bay's filmography. I think I've only seen like five of his films, but I've been hearing comparisons to The Rock, so take that as you will. I'm pretty sure there were a few Michael Bay Easter eggs, and attention has been drawn to the fact that this is small. It's not Transformers where the world is being destroyed. The action stays relatively contained, but I absolutely believe that this is his best film in years and that it is him at the top of his game. He knows exactly what he's doing here, even if it's not going to work for everyone. And the practical effects are excellent. I have no idea why Michael Bay was talking bad about it. I noticed the CGI one, maybe two times, and it never goes so big as to override your suspension of disbelief. Not to say that the movie is realistic by any means, but I was able to take it at face value, and I respect that it wasn't afraid to take its ridiculous self seriously. Some miscellaneous notes, I think it's too long. That's another issue I have. I thought that 20 minutes could have been shaved off. There are also a few logic and plot holes that come up that were temporarily distracting, but for me personally, ignorable. Other positives, I thought the score by Lauren Balf coupled with the sound design were excellent. That's such an important part of creating and maintaining that high octane thrilling atmosphere. It felt very Tenet-like, kind of reminded me of Wrath of Man, totally worked for me. There are also some excellent needle drops that were knowingly goofy, one where some of the characters are jamming out. California Dreamin' was perfect, and there's one where I forget what song it was, but it was coupled with drone shots that were flying on the highway and next to it, and I thought that was just surreal. Now, the ending I will stay vague about and just say that it worked for me. I think that some people will have complaints about it, but for me, it was a perfectly serviceable resolution. Nothing that will stand the test of time. Again, this is an extremely anxiety-inducing, aggressively paced, claustrophobic heist thriller, and a lot of people are going to love the experience that it brings, especially if you're typically fond of Michael Bay's shamelessly crazy camera work. And there will be people who absolutely despise it, so trust your feeling. My personal recommendation is see it in IMAX, be ready to feel like you're gonna throw up, enjoy the visceral stress that it brings if you're able, because it really feels like you're on a roller coaster. So with that experience, coupled with the couple issues that I had with the story and the length, etc. My rating for Ambulance is four out of five stars. We're already getting some great movies this year, guys. I find that so exciting. Let me know what you guys are looking forward to next. I personally am praying that I can snag an early screening to The Northman. I'm excited to check out Father Stew. I still have to see the Sonic sequel, so make sure to like and subscribe. Connect with me on social media so we can chat about those and keep an eye out for more videos soon. Thanks for watching, guys.